so parallel dots is uh, an artificial intelligence company which is uh, making innovative products around artificial intelligence and uh, right now what we are doing is that we are making deep learning as a service apis and uh, training on user data and basically giving these apis as uh, uh, to the developers to power their uh, applications so uh, we have made four different algorithms uh, these involve semantic similarity between two uh, two text content uh, a text classifier which is uh, more or less unsupervised that is you just give it a sentence and you give it a tag and can detect whether this belongs it or not you don't need a tag data set basically uh, there's an entity extraction where you can put up a sentence and we can directly detect named entities within it and uh, uh, we have a sentiment analysis api we can where you can analyze the sentiment of a uh, text so uh, what we did was for one of the clients, which is a news uh, company, uh, we made a contextual recommendation engine for their webs website. So uh, what happens is, so uh, these guys already had uh, recommendation engines, uh, but the point was that they often failed. Uh, they use TF-IDF based uh, tag search, and it turns out that for most of the articles, uh, they either fail or uh, the recommendations are not really good. So. So we decided to make a solution for that. So uh, the aims of this new solution that we're building was that it should be more accurate than the general TF-IDF based uh, related post plugins that you see on the website. Uh, by the way, you can see uh, more than one widgets which we uh, make. There is a related post widget, and we also make some timeline widget and things like that. But uh, the main aim was to keep the accuracy high, but uh, the cost should be low. The, the thing was that it's just a related post plugin, so they won't want to spend a lot on it. So uh, we started with our traditional uh, topic modeling algorithms in our MVP, and it turns out that it was very hard for us to scale them up. So we shifted to a deep learning based approach. And uh, here we, I'm trying to uh, describe that is what all approach we did we, did we take to uh, make this product. OK, so uh, let's, let's start with uh, looking, the, uh, looking at the overview of the product. I'll talk about different kind of technologies that we apply to basically make up a uh, recommendation engine. So uh, think of it like this way, so that uh, we put a lot of text. And uh, in the, in the, at the most basic level, what we are trying to do is uh, doing modeling for each of the world. So now uh, we take we look a comprehensive look at the uh, text. And for each of the world, we get a thought vector out. And this thought vector is something, uh, it's, a, it's a dense uh, low dimensional representation. Uh, and basically, it's like if you have a thought vector for queen, king, and man, and if you subtract the thought vector of man from king, you'll get a uh, thing related, uh, close to queen. So uh, so this was the most basic level. After we model all the words, we need something to basically combine these word embeddings into uh, sentences and phrases. So for that, we use uh, neural networks and, uh, and a few uh, heuristics. So uh, that is the second layer, uh, which, gives us, uh, which takes us from word level modeling to a sentence or phrase or document level modeling. After this, we actually make a, a search tree which is a uh, sparse, uh, which is a space partitioning based algorithm, and uh, on that we can basically query for related articles very fast. Uh, the last layer is basically our uh, web services which we write to uh, handle the insane amount of spike that we see in publishers' traffic. So the point being that uh, the a client I'm talking about uh, can have hundreds and millions of impressions per month, and uh, to scale up your uh, infrastructure to that level, we we needed to make some special uh, effort. So uh, I'll now describe each of these steps uh, one by one. So yeah, the basic thing is word embedding. As I talk about, it's a thought vector for words. Uh, a, a very popular implementation is Word2Vec, which many of people might have already have used. Uh, it works very well. Uh, but the point is that uh, Google patented it a few days back. Uh, Google has a very good record with respect to patent, but since we were like kind of anxious, so we decided implementing our own uh, version of this algorithm. It's it's by some other professors, which uh, we actually implemented and have open source, so you can actually try it on our GitHub. So uh, this is the algorithm that uh, we use to model world level features. Uh, then we go ahead and uh, actually model document or phrases or sentences. I'll, I'll also talk about some other models that we use at our startup, which I am not able to cover in this talk because that's not part of the recommendation engine. So, okay. So uh, what what we start with is once we have a, a document. We use a recursive neural network to basically pass the nodes and gather a document vector. So you can think of it as going from a thought vector of a doc, uh, word, to, of all the words, to a thought vector of the document. Uh, this we often uh, use a recursive neural network when we are trying to think of semantic proximity as to 
what kind of thing is being talked about or uh, there are some heuristics that we have found out and there is some research also that we incorporated if we want to just check with respect to entities and also there are two approaches that we use here to make a document vector. Uh, after, uh, apart from this, there are two other algorithms that we've got. We have a con uh, convolutional neural network based sentiment analysis. It basically convolves over uh, n grams of uh, word embeddings to get the sentiment out. Uh, there is also a recursive neural network based uh, entity extraction that we offer as an API. Okay, so now that we have uh, document vectors, uh, we, we need to actually search for them. The traditional approach would have been put up a Hadoop cluster, like divide things into n parts and query each of them separately. Now, as I told you that we weren't allowed to actually put a lot of resource into this. So what we decided was to make a search structure. So uh, space partitioning tree is a special class of algorithms where you can just recursively partition through uh, the hyperplane of the search uh, terms and get to a specific area where all your relevant things are located. So uh, we we implemented a version of, uh, so vantage point tree that I'm talking about is one of the implementations of such space partition trees. We implemented this and uh, now uh, if we give it a new document, it can just go ahead recursively partition and search for uh, the nearest uh, documents in near about order log n time. It's not exactly order, order log n. And uh, uh, we are, we are actually now, uh, so we already have a parallel implementation where we go ahead and actually divide the documents into n buckets, put them on different uh, different cores, and make different VP trees. So we are trying. We uh, right now have that kind of a concurrency, but we are slowly moving towards a shared memory kind of parallelism where we'll make it to slowly move towards uh, true login. Okay. Uh, so uh, now that we have got this infrastructure ready, where we want to query and search things. Uh, the main point was handling traffic. So we started with a simple Python and Redis-based thing. We thought, okay, when the document will come, we'll create a, a set of recommendations and we'll cache it and just keep throwing the recommendations again and again. The, uh, but what happens is that as soon as this publisher would put a tweet online about one of his articles, the, the traffic was just insane. Okay, so the Python server where we have put just was overwhelmed. Okay. So uh, we need, but there was some specific uh, characteristic of this traffic. If you look at this traffic, although there are like, Oh, there will be like 10,000 concurrent users at a time. There can be up to that much. But the number of unique articles there were, they were querying were like in a few hundreds. So uh, we wanted to utilize this property. So what we did was we made a, a pub sub kind of a web server where you can actually uh, get all the requests and then you can deduplicate these requests and uh, reduce the load on the machine learning server. And then when you get the output, you can basically uh, send across the output to all the subscribers. So uh, we use Go for this. Uh, the, the channel mechanism for handling concurrency is like really easy and cool to you. So none of us was system programmer, but we just went in and wrote this like in, in a month. Okay. So uh, that's, that's basically about uh, all the algorithms that we have put in there. Uh, now since uh, I know that most of you would be uh, wanting to hear more about the deep learning part that we have used, so uh, I, I, I put up some slides on basics of deep learning. So, so uh, as, as all the algorithms that you saw uh, were basically neural networks which have got multiple layers of weights and each of these layers of weights was separated by a activation function. Now this activation function is what brings a non-linearity into a neural network. If you remove this, it's basically just a set of linear transforms. Uh, so yeah, so this is uh, how a neural network is based. There are different architectures I'll describe in the next slide. Uh, okay, and uh, then uh, there are there are ways to train it. Uh, you uh, you typically use backpropagation, and most of the uh, neural networks that you see are trained using uh, gradient descent. So uh, there are other approaches also, but uh, all the uh, algorithms that we have are trained using gradient descent. Okay, so these are some common uh, architectures that uh, we can see around uh, floating around. So convolutional neural net is basically something that models the human visual cortex. Uh, human visual cortex uh, is modeled using these con convolution matrices, which will basically extract out uh, more and more higher level abstractions as the layers go ahead. And uh, the point of making such a neural network is to find out what is the optimum co con convolutional matrix for a each of the layer. So uh, there's a Boltzmann machine, which is basically a, st a stochastic uh, neural network implementation of a prob probabilistic graphical model. Uh, and then there's recursive and recurrent. So they both model arbitrary length chains, uh, arbitrary length sequences. For recursive, it actually models it as a graph, uh, as a tree, I'm sorry. And a recurrent models it as a chain. So uh, recursive basically just keeps on adding the same layer of weight and combine and see what is the most optimum combination as a tree. Uh, recurrent, although it looks simpler, but has got, uh, they increase its accuracy by putting in very uh, 
like some uh, more innovative neurons like LSTM and also this, uh, these, uh, this algorithm has got its own memory which it can uh, take in from one step and put on the another, other step. So uh, that's how, and that's what uh, these two networks are kind of the state of the art in NLP now uh, since we are working more on recursive. So uh, we, had, uh, we have more implementations of the recursive neural network. Okay, uh, since this is a short talk, I cannot just go with each of these, but uh, yeah, if, if you've seen neural network literature, there's a lot of buzzwords, so I've tried to gather things around that uh, some things are actually neural net units, some of these words, some of them are optimization strategies, some of them are uh, architectures. So uh, uh, I can actually come back if you want any questions you can ask for about any of them. Okay, uh, then how do we implement these models? Uh, so for us, Thiano, uh, Thiano is a Python library, uh, you can write your uh, neural network in almost NumPy-like syntax. It compiles it to uh, uh, a CUDA code, and CUDA is basically C for GPUs. It can run on all the NVIDIA GPUs that you have. So uh, uh, that's what that's where we implement all of all our algorithms. Uh, for light, uh, trying out our algorithms, we use a library called Kayak. It's it can it's very NumPy NumPy friendly, and it can run even on. Uh, uh, simple CPUs. Uh, if you uh, so, there are other libraries like PyLearn2, Lasagna. Uh, there's if you can think of them, they're like uh, what SciPy is to NumPy. Uh, these libraries are to Theano. They, they've got some um, algorithms implemented and things like that. There's some uh, implementations in other programming languages. Torch is in Lua, Cafe is and CUDA Convert are in C++. Okay, so uh, that's all we have. Uh, if uh, if you could go to our website, you can check out our demos. You can see how our algorithms work. We have uh, put up a demo on based on the general Indian context. You can see uh, for general blogs and sports people, you can actually see how this thing works out. Okay, I'm done. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be glad to take them. Uh, hello. You said about like moving from the word vectors to the phrase vector level, right? You are using an RNN. Like, can you tell like how is the process in this day? Okay, yeah. So uh, what happens is uh, a recursive neural network will try to pass any uh, arbitrary uh, sequence into a tree, and it tries to. So it will see a so, lot of. So uh, is it a fixer? You assume a fixed length for every vector, or? It I'm sorry. Could you? Could you? You assume uh, all the uh, documents to be of fixed length, or you uh, allow for variable? Yeah, so length? all the documents are of fixed size length. So it's it's exactly the same dimension as that of a word vector. But then, so you can even compare words and documents with each, with each other. Everything is for us. Everything is a hundred-dimensional vector, be it a document, be it a word, anything. No, no. I'm telling like, how are you reaching this phrase? Yeah, vector? yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll go ahead with that. So uh, basically, what it does is you give it a sentence. So for e for sentence, there is, will be different words for each of them. There will be a word embedding. Now, when you give it this array, it will try to basically make a graph, uh, a tree out of it. And no, how it's does a it? A simple addition of the word vectors. No, it, it it tries to make a tree out of it. It it's not rec so in I mean in recursive it anything that you give it to it it will try to make a optimized tree out of it. You give it a hundred sentence vector, it will see what is the most optimum rules or the weights of the neural network uh, that that help to make that tree, and that weights will be your output of the neural network. So uh, basically, you are uh, saying give these 100 documents, I've got these kind of word vectors, how do you think these things combine into each uh, into a single document vector? So yeah, What I'm asking is, I have this 100 dimensional word vectors, like a vector embedding for every word. Yeah. So for this, I want to come up with this um, using a recurrent neural network. So how would you train this to come up with this document vector? So what I'm talking about is not a recurrent, it's a recursive neural network okay. that we use here. So recurrent neural network is basically, uh, you, you put in LSTMs and st stuff like that in the middle, and it's, it passes in form of a chain. Uh, we use recursive neural networks, they, they actually make a, a tree out of the sentence automatically. So the point is, you just get these rules uh, in the language that how do you see these words of, uh, words being forming a sentence and all. And once you have, the, I like to call them grammar rules when I say so, but like, since this is, uh, there, there are more scientific people here, I won't, won't, I won't say that. But it's, it's set to come, it's set of rules to basically combine uh, words into docu uh, documents. Uh, that's what we get as a, a uh, weight in the neural network, the output weight. Does that answer your question? We'll take it offline. Okay. <laughs>